hey guys welcome back to the channel so let's try to make part two a little bit better than part one a lot of this footage for some reason wouldn't load into my iMovie I usually import it directly from the SD card in my computer directly to iMovie and there's not a problem but I get I kept getting prompted this warning about the audio and video or two sources I never got that before so when I'm recording I use my GoPro 10 mostly and I have the DJI wireless microphone that I like to use that's kind of new, so I'm still getting used to it, but I never got this warning before in iMovie, so I kind of panicked. I downloaded the Final Cut Pro, started using that. I got a lot to learn with that. I'm not ready to release a video using that software just yet. I like to make a nice video, a nicest video as I can. So I'm back to iMovie here. What I did was I downloaded the SD card onto my hard drive rather than directly into iMovie, and I was able to get some of the footage. It didn't come out. There's still some sections missing, so I'm not exactly sure why it was such a hard landing. But eventually, I put together about 20 minutes here, or 19 minutes, uh, for part two of this service upgrade that we did in Cranford. So it's an old house. It uh, has an old meter. The meter was inside the house. It's the old school meter, so we have to apply for a new meter uh, for the outside of the house. But that's for, the, that's for another video. But for right now, I'm just set up here. I want to uh, turn off all the circuit breakers or rather turn off all the fuses okay and then um, obviously cut out from the service before pulling that meter because it's an old school meter and you'll see later in the video how um, the meter is set up there's two sets of line wires obviously for 240 volts 120 volts each leg and then a load side that goes right to the panel so the, the wiring comes into the meter but it's not a meter that pushes in. It actually has four lugs at the bottom, two are for line and two are for load. More on that in a little bit. Okay, so cutting out was pretty simple here. Uh, I got plenty of room right in front of me. There's no branches, nothing in my way. So I'm just cutting. And then what I do is I safe off the supply side with some vinyl tape just so it doesn't arc between it and the ground or the house or anything else just for safety I'm not tying in any temporary power whatsoever the only time I need extra power at that job is to uh, obviously heat up that PVC and I'll either do that the night before or the first thing I do when I get there okay so this might look crazy but I'm cutting this conduit first and then the top of it the service head is gonna land on the top rung of the extension ladder deliberately and the reason why I do this is so that the conduit and the steel and the copper the conductors everything falls down right on top of you it lands on that top rung and then I can safely climb up the ladder and disable it from the top rung and just toss it off to the side safely no one's hurt I've done this a bunch of times it always works Okay, so inside the meter enclosure, you can see the wires that are looped. One set is the line set, the other side is the load set. The reason why they're looped like that, I believe, is for an old amp meter. So you can put your amp reader in there, and you can see how many amps are running through that wire. If it's for something else, you know, leave it in the comments. Thank you. So sometimes, or well most of the time, doing these service upgrades on a house like this, there's more work getting rid of the old equipment than there is putting the new equipment in and sizing that up. Just getting this old stuff down, you don't know how it's in there. Here, what they did was they used, looks like uh, old 2x6s of pine, 
and they nailed two of them with cuts with cut nails uh, through the wood and then into the cinder block. That's how they used to do it. And it lasted. This thing was in pretty good condition, actually. And then they um, did two by sixes going across, um, you know, west to east there. And so <clears throat> it was well built, and it didn't like, you know, there's a few errors in the wiring here. There's a few double tap circuit breakers. And um, I don't know if I included it in the first video, but that main lug only panel there up at the top with the four General Electric circuit breakers is actually six circuit breakers there and it was fed by a 20 amp 240 volt circuit down in the fuse panel so uh somehow that lasted obviously there's not much load on either of those branch circuits otherwise those um fuses that supplied that main lug only panel would have overloaded over time there were a lot of uh spare fuses there so i don't know maybe they did uh blow a lot of fuses over the course of the uh lifetime of this panel uh, but everything was working when I got there. I'm not sure if there's natural gas at this house or not. I would have to check. You just witnessed me doing the world a favor by throwing those GE circuit breakers right in the garbage. I, I'm not a fan of anything by General Electric. Any kind of appliance, electrical equipment, I'm done. It's, to me, it's just garbage, especially the electrical panels. I will never install one of those in. I don't like the way they sit on the bus bar. Usually loose, undependable, just crap. That's just my opinion. If you have a different opinion and you like the GE panels, let me know that in the comments. I'll be surprised if there's many comments about that in favor of the General Electric panels. So here I really got lucky pulling this old, uh, looks like it's either, I think it's one inch conduit here with three number four coppers going up there for the 100 amp service. So I get real lucky here getting the whole 90 out in one piece. Very lucky. So I originally didn't know what I was going to do as far as covering up that old J channel but you'll see in a minute here what I do okay so the problem here is I've made my hole for the LB okay the LB is gonna sit nice and tight I think I'm gonna go run to get some Azac Put it behind here to cover all this mess up so no water gets in there but i might not we'll see if i can make this work but the trouble i'm having is i'm going to go straight in and as you can see the old service had that 90 on it so i got some cinder block in my way where i've got my hole for the pvc lb so on the other side the hole where the water where the old kind of came through is a little bit lower than the hole on the outside as you can see i'm looking up at that outside hole Okay, so what I need to do is to cut away a little bit of this 2x6 here, which I probably could take down, and then uh, make my hole a little bit higher. I think I'm going to take this down. So I did have to run out in the middle of the day to go get this board, uh, but I couldn't leave the service like that with the siding exposed like that. So 
This is half inch knockoff Azek. And as you'll see, I'll assemble the uh, meter pan and the LB beneath it going to feed the panel uh, on this piece of Azek. I'm going to pre-fit it here on the table inside the garage before I mount it to the outside. I'm going to mark out here for where I need to make my hole through that Azek to get inside to the panel where the LB is there. So I'll take the cover off here in a second and you'll see what I mean. I'll use a hole saw just big enough for that LB to fit through and then uh, send it home. Hey guys, do me a favor. If you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're so inclined to see more of my videos, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you. So one of the things I like to do when I'm working with the 2-inch PVC is I try not to use any couplings if I can help it. So I'll get two pieces even if it's a 12-foot run. And I think this was maybe like a 12 or 13-foot riser. So what I want to do is I want to try to use that bell bottom, the molded coupling built into this stick of PVC, as my coupling. And I want to have that in the middle between the top of the meter and where the service head is. Just, just so it looks uh, aesthetically pleasing. Now, it's a small detail. It's not super important. Um, but if you do a lot of them and you take pride in what you do, maybe you want to do that. Especially the bell bottom. Nothing makes me more irate than seeing the bell bottom upside down where actually water can be in, could go in through that coupling hole. Now, it's highly unlikely that it will. Uh, but when I see the up, upside down bell bottom PVC run, it just makes me crazy. And so... Um, at the top of the meter here, you're supposed to have a strap within the first 12 inches. And then, of course, within the first 12 inches of where the service head is. Okay. And then for PVC, the code is just a strap every five feet. Uh, but I like to do it a little bit more than that. You'll see here, I'll use my box level. And I'll just use that as a scope for the distance between the straps so that they're uniform. And I'll do that all the way up into the top. Usually there is a discrepancy where one strap is going to be a little bit closer or a little bit further than where it needs to be as far as the top where the service head where the mat, uh, the service head is. Uh, but I'm okay with that. Um, you'll see at the end here it looks very uniform and uh, evenly spaced and it looks like somebody who did it actually gave a damn and cared about the work he did. At least that's what I hope uh, my customers see when they see the service that they paid for. Okay, so here on the inside, what I'm doing is I'm using an auger bit, I'm sorry, a paddle bit here. It's an inch and a half inch wide, and I'm making it big enough so I can bury my 3 8 lag screw and attach it to the shield, which is like a, a, a metal anchor that goes inside this uh, cinder block wall. All right, I'm drilling a 5 8 hole just deep enough to fit this anchor. And then I'm, I'm putting the lag screw through the beam, and I'll tighten it down with a 9 16th um, a 9 16th ratchet bit. And that makes it really, really tight to the wall. Just one on each. Once this thing is in there, it's in there. It opens up inside the cinder block, and impossible to get that off the wall. These are the best things for the cinder block. Now, I've used plastic anchors in the past. I've also used... Um, the Tapcon screws, but the Tapcon screws are awful in the cinder block. If it's not poured concrete, those Tapcon screws really don't work well in this application. So once I have my 2x4s, uh, the pressure treated 2x4s attached to the cinder block wall, I'm going to mark on my board here where I want to make the, the knockout, I'm sorry, the knockout, the hole saw, for that two inch PVC from the LB coming into the back of the panel where that cutout's gonna be. And this is where it's gonna be right here. So this hole saw is just a little bit bigger than uh, the width of the, uh, or the size of the PVC. And I would say the trade size is probably closer to two and a half inches for the uh, Schedule 40 PVC. So 
So here's my finished hole for the conduit to come through the board. This board is three quarter inch plywood painted and uh, we attach it to the wall then we make the cutout for the panel. Once the panel is up on that board, it's almost we're almost home free here because all the old work and figuring things out as far as where the panel is going to go, how the panel cover, uh, how the panel mounting board is going to go up, where the hole is going to come in, all of that's been solved. All of that's been done, and now the easy work begins by getting these old circuits into the panel. So this house was so old, and I think there's maybe 12 or 14 circuits here when I was done. This house was so old; it was built before central air conditioning was invented. There was no central air conditioning at this house, which is kind of weird. And that tells me that it was built way before 1960. Reason being is because they really didn't start building houses with built-in air conditioning until the 1960s. Okay, and so I believe in the next 20 to 40, maybe 50, 60 years, they, builders will not be building houses without backup generators in them. Uh, right now, it's not a code. I don't think it ever will be code, although... There's been discussion that it will be required for gas stations uh, because if you live through Hurricane Sandy like we did here in the Northeast, we didn't have gas for about two weeks and some of these gas stations didn't have power. People were really starting to freak out. We couldn't go anywhere. So gasoline became essential. And so if they can't dispense it, well, that's a problem for the general public. So uh, there might there's. I'm pretty sure there's a move right now for, for generators or at least to have the setup, the setup generators to dispense gasoline. And I believe maybe one day that will be a code. Maybe in certain states it'll be code before it's in the National Electric Code. Uh, but I think that's a good idea to have um, at least a setup so that you can, so that you can connect a portable large size three phase generator to a gas station so that you can dispense the gasoline. Uh, but getting back to this house, yeah, no central air conditioning. So there was like maybe 14 circuits here. There was one double pole circuit or maybe two. It was a multi-wire branch circuit. So at that point, I have to do a uh, double pole circuit breaker uh, because it has the common neutral. And so the code says it needs a common trip for both of those circuits that that neutral is providing neutral current for. Hey, if you like this video, do me a favor. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe Hit the notification bell. And if you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you, guys.